Hello, everybody. My name is Barry Johns, and welcome back to another edition of Studio Talk. Today, I'm going to be doing a review of the Cali Audio LP6 V2. Let's get to it. Okay, okay. So, today I'm going to do a review of Cali Audio's LP6 V2. They sent me these set of monitors to review. I have not been paid to do this review, nor do they get a chance to see it before it gets published. That said, when I do a review on this channel, and I don't plan to do a ton of them, but when I do a review on this channel, I can promise you that you're always going to get my honest and upfront answer. Now, let's talk about that for a second. I'm going to go on a little rant real quick about YouTube people like me out there that do this kind of stuff. And one of the frustrations I always had as someone watching these reviews is it seemed they were all conspicuously the same. Uh, they all seemed to be pushing a particular set of gear versus giving the true, true, true breakdown of the good and bad about it. You've got another YouTuber out there. All he does is find things wrong with a piece of gear. And I think we need to have balance. So I can assure you, whatever review I give will be my honest opinion. That I promise you. Now, I've been using these monitors for a little over a week. Uh, I've used them daily and I've monitored a, a varied degree of source material from them. Uh, I have done, I pulled up mixes of my own that I had done. I compared them against my... Atom A77Xs back there, of which you would expect that they can't truly compete with. Um, but you can see the LP6 is right behind me in white. Now, this is the version that's white. They do make a version that's black, depending on the studio aesthetics that you're looking for. So before we dig down into my particular thoughts on it, let's take a look at these monitors and talk about some of the specs. Okay, the Cali Audio LP6 V2 has a 6.5 inch powered studio monitor with a 1 inch dome tweeter. It's 80 watts, 40 watts feeding the woofer and 40 watts feeding the tweeter. It has a bi-amp design with an integrated Class D power amp. It has a ruler flat frequency response. It exhibits negligible levels of distortion a full 6 dB lower than its nearest competitor. Has 20 dB of headroom while playing continuously at 85 dB. Large magnets and voice coils produce super accurate low end response and impressive low frequency extension. Its cutting edge waveguide design creates a massive soundstage with spot on imaging. A low noise port tube yields clean, punchy bass with zero shuffling. Boundary EQ enables you to tailor the speaker to any environment it also has low frequency and high frequency trims for fine tuning the speaker's response. It has balanced XLR and TRS inputs as well as an unbalanced RCA input. It has a frequency response of 47 Hz all the way up to 21 kHz. The built-in crossover is set at 1.5 kHz. It has dip switches to get your proper setting of the EQ and get it tuned properly for your room. Each speaker is 14.12 inches high, 8.75 inches wide, and 10.25 inches deep, and comes in at a weight of 15.54 pounds. Okay, all right, so in this particular review, I will not be playing the speakers in the background because I think that's kind of futile. There's no way in the world you can tell how a set of speakers work in the room. Just trust that I've already done that. So I want to put a few things into perspective. The first version that the, that came out of these, the version one, I assume they call V1 now, um, had rave reviews. They've been selling like crazy, like crazy. Uh, and so they've apparently updated these new uh, monitors to version two. We talked about some of that in the specs part. Okay, so one thing I want to point out first and right out of the gate, because I think this is probably the number one thing you've got to consider at this point, because the quality of Project Studio uh, monitors, especially at the entry level or budget level monitors, which these happen to fall under, uh, has become quite stiff. So with any studio monitor, it's like anything else in your studio. You get exactly what you pay for, which is why I can't realistically compare those monitors back there to my Atom T7 or A77Xs. 
I can't compare them to that because that would not be fair. Those are $2,800 a pair compared to these at $400 a pair. So that's not an accurate thing. So understand, monitors in your studio can be a rabbit hole. You can always get better. You know, you can get monitors up into $50,000 or probably even more. I don't know. I never even look at them in that price range. I'm not even out of curiosity. Um, but, but understand that. So we're going to keep into perspective for the sake of this discussion, anything in the, say, 500, 550-ish range and below. That's where um, you probably got to take a look at a recent uh, review I did of Adam Audio T7Vs, of which I was very, very, very pleased with that set of monitors. Very, very, very pleased. I actually thought they were incredibly impressive for the price. At $550 to get a set of monitors with that level of quality was unheard of uh, 20 years ago, 10 years ago. This is something that's developing recently, and it's a good thing for you and all the rest of us when we can get quality at an affordable price. So in comes these Cali Audios that, that, that obviously are competing in that range. You know, they bump their price up to $200 each. So that puts them at $400. So when you're comparing $400 against $550, that's going to be a hard decision. I have to be honest with you, a hard decision. Um, if it were back to, if they'd left them at $150 and then they were $300 for a pair and the others were $550, then I think that decision is incredibly easy at that point. I think the mistake they made was increasing the price. Now, I don't know whether they knew about Atom Audio T7Vs at the point, at the time that when they were releasing these or developing them or establishing their price, but they've obviously put themselves in a head-to-head -head competition with that set of monitors, in my opinion. That's not just because I reviewed them. If you go out there and you look at your trusted reviewers, you will find that a lot of people have had amazing things to say about the Atom Audio, Audio T7Vs, as well as, quite frankly, the Cali Audio LP6s. So understanding the difference in comparison is a 6-inch woofer to a 7-inch woofer. So what you've got to decide is how much low end do you need in your room? And I, tr and I guarantee you it's less than you think. Everybody wants that. They're used to that cranking up that low end in their car and, and other places, maybe that subwoofer. And at the end of the day, in your studio, that really can work against you. You don't need that much low end. So, so you should be taking a look at these based upon their overall sonics because one thing that Cali did versus around Atom Audio is they're all, they're an inch different in their, in their size of their woofers, you know, and so you can't really compare apples to apples in the size of the woofer. Now, I will say in comparison to these, to the Atom Audio, there is a lot of stiff competition. So let's get to that. All right. So the low end of these monitors I found to be exceptional. I found it to be quite, quite, quite good. Now, keep in mind, we're talking the price range, uh, but I found the low end, especially considering it's a six inch woofer, I found the low end to be very, very, uh, very, very good. Uh, it had enough of that chest thump that you'd want to hear, not overbearing, not too much, just enough so you know if that's what you're going for, you're actually getting it. I found the the kick drum and the toms and the bass and, and especially progressive instruments to be tight, which is a good sign instead of sounding loose and flubby like a lot of inexpensive monitors can do. So I would say on the bass front, on the low end front, I would say overall these are as good as the Atom Audio, although the Atom Audio will give you more bass, of course. It's a 7-inch woofer compared to a 6-inch woofer, but I think you would find that you're really not going to use that. And I actually found the tight end, really more than anything else, the tight end, the tightness of the low end of, the, of these monitors to actually compete, to actually do a better, somewhat better job than the Atom T7Vs. Now let's talk about the mid-range. If I have some nitpicking to do, I found that the mid-range could be muffly. I think you, I lost some definition and some clarity, especially in the upper mids, um, compared to the Atom Audio. I think there, that's the one area where I think these these units could do better. Uh, but then again, they are in a two hundred dollar uh, each price range. So that for that price range, I think they're exceptional. 
I think they're exceptional. But if I'm nitpicking and I'm really giving being critical about it, I would say that the uh, the upper mids, especially the upper mids, could be a little muffly. Uh, I, I can't, can't find a better way to describe it. Now, what you got as an opposite result of that is your stereo image, the width of these was very, 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 very good. Panning left and right was outstanding on these. You could really put the placement exactly where you wanted it and feel like you got it exactly where you wanted it. I found on the Atom Audio, it was great stereo image, okay? But I didn't find that um, that detail to be quite as nice. So I think on the, the panning side of things, not just when I say stereo image, I'm talking about wideness, and I'm also talking about placement. Okay, as far as wideness, I think the Atom Audio beats these. As far as placement, I think the Cali Audio beats the um, the uh, Atom Audio. So, again, these are some trade offs that you ultimately get. But I thought that the separation and everything was fantastic. The clarity was very, very good. I'll be honest with you, I was completely. I, I guess I'm floored at what can be done today with with Project Studio monitors. You know, having somebody who's who's bought countless sets of Project Studio monitors over the decades uh, across the board from entry level uh, unit units like these all the way up to those Atom Audio A77Xs, that being the most I've ever spent on a set of monitors. But I've had a lot in between over these decades. And, you know, I originally started out with a set of Mackies that were $800 and we're talking 20, no, 15 years ago, maybe. 800 bucks back then, and these are, are and then those were good monitors, don't get me wrong. Those are, especially at the time, those are great. Actually, probably one of the best Project Studio monitors at the time because there wasn't a lot of competition, especially back then. But these, hands down, blow those Mackies away at half the cost 15 years later. So that tells us a lot of, you know, things have come a long way. Now, obviously, doing reviews of monitors is very subjective, right? There's so many variables the treatment in your room, the size of the room, the placement in your room. All these things affect your ability to get the most out of any set of monitors. If you take these monitors and you go put them in an untreated room, they're not going to sound anywhere near as good as they will in a treated room. So you have to understand these things. So understand when I'm doing a comparison to the Atom Audio compared to the Cali Audio, um, we're really kind of splitting hairs to a degree. Like I said in the beginning, I think at the end, it's all going to come down to price. So overall, I think these monitors are incredibly good for the price. I would go to say they are exceptional for the price. Are they perfect? No, they're not perfect. Even for the price, they're not perfect. I think they could have done a better job on that mids and especially the upper mids of getting some detail in there. Once I flipped to my Atom Audio, my A77Xs, man, that middle just jumped right out at me. But yet I still kept that uh, that width, that stereo image, that depth. I kept all that on the Atoms, but I lost that a little bit on these Callies. Now, again, you're back to 2,500 compared to 400 for a pair. So you have to kind of keep that into consideration. But I thought that the upper mids and everything were fantastic on the... Uh, on the Atom A77, or I'm sorry, the Atom Audio T76s or T, crap, on the Atom Audio T7V. I got it, man. I was going to keep going until I didn't screw it up anymore because I quite frankly didn't have a choice. So, uh, so, it, it, so anyway, so th these are my thoughts on these monitors. I think if, if uh, Cali Audio dropped the price even by $25 each, I would say it's a no brainer. If money's tight, and you can't afford to save up the extra money, feel confident knowing you've got a great set of Project Studio monitors for the price in these Cali Audios. If, if they keep the price the same and you can swing saving another $150, which I know is a lot when you're trying to get to $400, it would be worth it to do that. Now, if it was going to take me a year to do that, I would say, no, don't do that. Buy these Cali Audios today. Then save up again because I promise you, no matter what set of monitors you buy today, and I don't care what price range you're in, for the most part, you will at some point buy more monitors for your project studio. You will uh, you will want to upgrade those at some point. 
I'm just telling you, that's the way it is for all of us. So I hope you like the things I talk about on this channel. You know, I've got, I've been at this since June of 2020. So not very long, not even six months into this yet. My channel's growing quite rapidly. So I'd appreciate it if you hit that like, that subscribe and that notification bell. So you get notified and help me out and, and, and subscribe to my channel. I really appreciate it. Uh, I've got over 80 videos out there, okay, covering the gamut. Go check some of them, some of them out. Go watch that Adam Audio uh, video I did on the review of those monitors. For the record, I did give those monitors away. And uh, Justin, I hope you're enjoying those monitors. So until next time, I hope every one of you have a freaking fantastic day. Okay, I realize not everybody has an appreciation for unboxing, but I know some people do. So typically when I do a review, I'll put the unboxing at the end of the video for those that want to watch that. As you can see here, we're doing a review of the Cali Audio LP6 uh, studio monitors. Down below here, right down to this camera below, I've got the other box. So let's get to opening this thing up. All right, so... Here we got the top off. As you can see, it's typically got your literature that comes with it with some specs and some things that you need to read to properly use these monitors. And then, of course, there's a power cord. Everybody needs a power cord. And then they come up with these little um, adhesive rubber. Uh, let me put that over by my face so to get into in, um, focus. But anyway, we're using these little rubber things to, to make sure they're secure on top of whatever surface you're putting them on. And of course, everybody loves these. These things are awesome. Not really. Okay, so let's take that off and let's see what we got in here. Now, if I remember correctly, I think these are white. So I assume they come in different colors. This is gonna be my first time using uh, uh, Cali Audio Monitor. So let's pull this out of the box. Let's move that box off to the side here. And let's open that up. And let's see what we've got. Got the foam off of around it. Well, it's a pretty good looking monitor. It's a little interesting looking, I have to say. So hopefully you've liked this review and have a great day.